Today, I want to discuss a topic that's dear and near to my heart is the reason why some people choose not to start. And when I'm talking about this, it's because I've received numerous emails from people that are making justifications in their mind for why they can't start interacting with the government, why they can't tackle this projects, why they can't find a uh, company to work with. And a lot of times it boils down to fear. But what I want to say is from my own personal experiences and recently some of the experiences of my guests is that we started out with less than what you have today. A lot of people have a backup plan. A lot of people have uh, resources. A lot of people are living very nice, comfortable lives and they're not they're not uncomfortable. So essentially, it's difficult for them to see uh, stepping back from the comfort of their lives and the comfort of their livelihood to uh, take a chance with something new, uh, something that could actually lead them to a greater place. And so part of the conversation that I want to have today is really sharing a story from an interview that I did with my recent podcast guest, John Tellier of Jetco Solutions, um, and where John started. And I'm, and I'm going to let John tell you in his own words uh, what he had to go through to get started and where he's at today. Back then, <laughs> I think we started with, with $5,000 with uh, Fifth Third and then uh, our neighbor worked at PNC and, and, you know, he said, well, I can get you to 20 and, and, uh, um, but we realized, you know, we, we don't really need, um, we don't really need that because we'll, we'll cash flow this. And if, if we can't afford it, then we won't, uh, we won't oh, buy it. Right, right. And I think that's, I, I was talking to somebody the other day and, and, uh, and, uh, I told him a story about, you know, early on in our, our Jetco career, M Live did a did a an article on us. And uh oh, his name was Rod uh Rod Cackley. And so he comes back, you know, he 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 uh showcases six companies, he comes back four years later and follows up and and uh there's one company remaining. And that was us. We were still in business. The other ones had, had either been sold or had uh, had closed their doors, and uh, and so you know one of the tenants that we had lived by was if we, you know if, if we can't afford it then um, we don't need it. And I was telling, I believe it was our our uh, our marketing director, and I I said you know um, that's kind of how we how we live by, and uh, and I think many times nowadays entrepreneurs, you know, veterans, you know they. Um, well, I, you know, I, I got a business, so I'm, you know, I need to have a car and a computer and a phone, and uh, then they then they try to figure out what they're, what they're going to do, and so I kind of look at it in the, in the opposite way of, uh, you know, help your clients be successful, and you know they'll refer you, and and uh, you know for for years I, I drove an old uh ford explorer and uh and finally we were i i told my wife i said you know i'm kind of embarrassed <laughs> because it was loud and uh and 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 i to open the door from the inside i had to roll down the window and open it from the outside oh, wow. and uh <laughs> and, the, and, the, I like and i said um we uh I said, I, I'm, you know, I think, you know, our clients want us to be successful, um, but right now I think we just kind of look, um, we look poor. And I, I, I said we should at least uh, replace the Explorer because it's it's kind of an eyesore. So we got a we got a Ford Fusion, and uh -huh. uh, and, and we put two hundred and fifty four thousand miles on on that car over the years. So wow. So again, uh, the reason why I brought this up was because to me, it was significant. It was significant enough to talk about uh, and sharing his experience, sharing his stories, because 
you know, one what what I hear often is that oh, this person had an advantage over me. This person had these resources. This person had uh, connections. This person had, and again, uh, you know, we can all go from and pull from our bag of excuses of why it is we can't do something. But when I ask the people out there from my, some of my students, and I'd say, you know, um, so tell me what's holding you back. Well, I don't have this. I don't have that. I don't have this other thing. And again, like in anything else that we've come to learn, there are people that are further than where we want to be at and that start off with less than we have. So I just want to help uh, provide some clarity to people who may be discouraged or who may think that for uh, lack of resources that they are at a disadvantage. And in fact, um, the only reason why I would say that people might be at a disadvantage is because they have too many resources. And that sense of comfort is what is uh, preventing them from being able to take the next steps forward because they don't want to risk or jeopardize that sense of comfort. Hope this video helped some people out there today. Uh, if you have not already, take a look at our podcast. This interview uh, will be coming up uh, 2020 January. But at the same time, we do have other wonderful interviews that we have released. Uh, yesterday's interview with Emily Harmon uh, was excellent. Uh, the one before that. Um, so, again, take a look at our podcast, GovConGiants.com. Anywhere where you get your podcasting, listening to Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Apple iTunes.